We saw in the case of the H2 plus molecule, we could solve the Schrodinger equation exactly because that was a single electron system. We got exact expressions for energies and exact expressions for uh, the wave function. And we introduced the term bonding and antibonding orbitals uh, arising out of that molecular orbital treatment of the hydrogen er ion, the H2 plus ion molecule. Now what happens if we have um, a molecule, which we uh, undoubtedly will have, a molecule that has more than one electron? What are we going to do there? Well, we'll take the same approach that we took when we had atoms that had more than one electron. We introduced approximation methods, and the two major ones we did was uh, the perturbation method, method and the variation method. Uh, in this uh, molecular orbital treatment here, we'll concentrate on the variation method, ways in which you can uh, solve the Schrodinger equation approximately using wave functions, trial wave functions that have adjustable parameters. Recall that the variation method is that you adjust those parameters until you get an energy that is minimized, and that collection of parameters that minimizes the energy, that it will give you the best trial wave function possible and the best energy possible for that particular base basis set. Now as we had mentioned uh, earlier, computational chemistry programs use as a basis set these Gaussian functions. They use that for computational efficiency. And we'll talk about using those basis sets to solve approximately the Schrodinger equation for molecules in a little while. But first let's uh, look at this basis set. Suppose that we just combine the atomic orbitals uh, on atoms and then we're going to use those atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals and we're going to combine them in a linear fashion. That's called linear combination of atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals, LCAOMO. This is similar to what we did with the valence bond approach, but there what we did was just overlap the orbitals, the atomic orbitals, to form bonding orbitals. Here we're going to combine atomic orbitals uh, and uh, ideally these would be throughout the molecule and we get a molecular orbital throughout the molecule. And that's a little different from what we did in the valence bond theory. The first step though is the same, namely we take the atomic orbitals and now instead of just overlapping to form bonding uh, bonds, we're now going to combine them to form molecular orbitals using uh, the variation method to solve the Schrodinger equation.